In this episode, we delve into the increasingly prominent exploration of Islamic forms of esotericism within Western esoteric studies. This surge in interest reflects a critical examination of the traditional boundaries defining Western esotericism and underscores a growing commitment to a more global perspective. The term West and Western have been subject to intense scholarly debate, challenging their validity as categories and re-evaluating how we compare Western and Islamic esoteric traditions. Despite the rich discourse, a systematic approach to defining Islamic esotericism remains elusive, marking a significant gap in comparative studies. Our discussion sets the stage for a deeper understanding of Islamic esotericism by proposing Proposing a theoretical framework grounded in both etymology and historical context. Liana Saif's scholarly work, upon which the content of this episode is based, will help us explore Islamic esoteric currents through two primary lenses the intellectual or revelatory understanding of hidden phenomena, and their intersection with personal and communal expressions of piety. Particular focus will be placed on two pivotal eras, the formative period between the 10th and the 13th centuries, which saw the rise and institutionalization of Sufism, and the early to mid-20th century, marked by the emergence of Islamic esotericism within the traditional traditionalist school. By tracing the concept of Bartiniya or esotericism across these periods, we aim to illuminate the dynamic interplay between medieval and modern interpretations and their respective social, political and intellectual contexts. This episode invites you to journey through the diverse manifestation of Islamic esotericism across different epochs and regions, offering a preliminary yet insightful exploration of its theoretical underpinnings and and historical trajectories. Join us as we navigate the complexities of Islamic historic thought, setting the groundwork for future scholarly endeavors in this fascinating field. Before we dive in, I'd love to remind you to sign up for my newsletter. Don't rely on the capricious algorithm and social media platforms that could shut down whenever they decide. By signing up for my newsletter, you will always be up to date with my work and will get access to exclusive content, pictures, insights, and academic research. You will find the link in the bio, the cards, the info box, and the pinned comment. You will also find all the ways to support Angela's Symposium as this project is brought to you by you. Check out the services I offer on drangelapuka.com and join my email inner symposium on Patreon, coffee, or YouTube memberships. And thank you to the generous souls who make this knowledge available to all. Now, let the symposium begin. Hello, symposiast. I'm Dr. Angela Puka, Religious Studies PhD, and this is your online resource for the academic study of magic esotericism, paganism, shamanism, and all things occult. As Liana Saif highlights, the globalization of esotericism, particularly as it intersects with Islam, prompts a re-evaluation of the traditional narratives that have predominantly centered on Western esoteric traditions. The seminal works of Antoine Fever, notably Access to Western Esotericism, have been instrumental in sharing these narratives, positing esotericism as a phenomenon emerging primarily within the Western context, particularly during the Renaissance. Favre's cautious approach to universalizing esotericism reflects a methodological stance aimed at preserving scholarly objectivity, yet his framework notably sidelines Islamic esotericism. This omission points to a broader issue within the field, the underrepresentation of non-Western esoteric traditions and the challenges of integrating them into a global esoteric discourse. The bibliographical contributions of scholars like Henry Corbin, Mohammed Amir Mezi, and others underscores a persistent inclination towards a 
Westernist perspective within the study of Islamic esotericism. This perspective often romanticizes Islamic contributions through a lens of universalism influenced by perennial and traditionalist views. The adoption of Corbyn's concept of the mundus imaginalis highlights the selective incorporation of Islamic esoteric thought into Western narratives, reflecting a nuanced yet limited engagement with the broader spectrum of Islamic esoteric traditions. As scholars like Vader Hanegraaff and others argue for a more inclusive understanding of esotericism that acknowledges its global dimensions, the field faces the challenge of reconciling the specificity of Western esotericism with the universality of esoteric traditions worldwide. This entails grappling with the complex interplay of cultural, religious, and historical factors Factors that have shaped esoteric practices across different societies. The discussion extends beyond academic categorizations to engage with deeper questions of cultural exchange, identity formation, and the legacy of colonialism and orientalism. Kenneth Granholm's critique of the othering inherent in esoteric discourse and the subsequent call for a deorientalization of Islamicate occult sciences by Matthew Melvin Koshki further illuminate the need to transcend Orientalist frameworks. This calls for a reevaluation not only challenges the binary of West versus East, but also advocate for recognizing the fluid and interconnected nature of esoteric traditions. This perspective invites a more nuanced understanding of the historical and intellectual entanglements that have contributed to the rich landscape of global esotericism. In the field of Islamic studies, the delineation of esoteric and esotericism has often been approached without deep reflection, primarily associating these terms with Sufism and Shia Islam. This association, largely inherited from scholars like Eliade and Corbin, is rooted in the binary of esoteric versus exoteric interpretations, a distinction that has historical and political underpinnings, especially within the context of Sufism and Shia traditions, where discretion was a necessity in a persecutory environment. Critiques such as those by Feras Hamza argue that the application of esoteric in Quranic exegesis and Islamic studies has been arbitrary, calling for a nuanced understanding of what constitutes esoteric content beyond mere textual analysis. This challenge suggests a move away from evaluating texts on their esoteric merits based solely on their content, towards an understanding of esotericism as a mode of knowledge, shaped by broader historical and epistemological context. The debate extends to the role of Sufism within Islamic historicism, with some scholars like Simon Sorgerfrey questioning the exclusion of Sufism from the esoteric realm due to its adherence to exoteric religious duties. This perspective, however, introduces a new binary of orthodoxy versus heterodoxy, which may not fully capture the nuanced relationship between Sufism and Islamic law suggesting that adherence to the law does not necessarily preclude an esoteric dimension. Further exploration into Islamic esotericism is seen in the works of scholars like Noah Gardiner, who examines the social discretion and elitism of occultist and Sufi communities, and Matthew Melvin Kushki, who discusses the de-esotericization of occult sciences. These studies highlight the fluctuating significance of discretion and secrecy in Islamic esoteric traditions, indicating that these are not definitive traits of Islamic historicism, but factors influenced by historical and regional specifics. It's also important to touch upon the philosophical underpinnings of uh, historicism in Islam, as exemplified by Nasr Hamid Abu Zaid's work on the philosophy of interpretation and explanation.
Abu Zaid advocates for a holistic approach that recognizes the inherent subjectivity in interpreting sacred texts, suggesting that historicism rooted in this interpretive philosophy is central to Islamic intellectual and mystical pursuits. This exploration into Islamic historicism from the perspective of Islamic studies invites a broader, more nuanced understanding of historic traditions within Islam. It challenges binary distinctions and and calls for an appreciation of the complex interplay between text, interpretation, and historical context in shaping what is understood as esoteric knowledge within the Islamic tradition. The terms batin and zahir, translating to esoteric and exoteric respectively, are deeply rooted in Islamic thought, reflecting the inner and outer dimensions of understanding, particularly in the context of Quranic exegesis. The concept that each verse of the Quran harbors both an apparent zahir meaning and a hidden batin one underscores the tradition of seeking a deeper esoteric interpretations beyond the literal text. This duality is not unique to Islam. It echoes ancient philosophical traditions where secret doctrines were reserved for a select few, paralleling the esoteric teachings of figures like Pythagoras and the dual doctrine approach of ancient philosophy. Bartiniya, or esotericism, has historically carried various connotations, from positive associations with wisdom and deeper knowledge to pejorative implications, particularly when it challenges or seems to bypass exoteric religious practices. This term has been applied to groups and individuals focused on the esoteric dimensions of Islam, including Sufis and Ismailis, illustrating a broad spectrum of engagement with hidden knowledge. Significantly, the use of batin and its derivatives is not merely a modern or external imposition, but is found in classical Islamic texts, highlighting a long-standing recognition of an esoteric dimension within Islamic scholarship. The debate over the balance and interaction between Batin esoteric and Zahir exoteric aspects of Islam reflects deeper questions about the nature of divine knowledge, the accessibility of spiritual truths, and the relationship between the letter of the law and its inner spiritual essence. Islamic esotericism, as outlined by scholars like Al-Ghazali, involves a nuanced and multifaceted approach to religious knowledge, emphasizing the importance of spiritual insight and the necessity of maintaining a balance between the outer forms of religious practice and the inner pursuit of divine truth. This tradition acknowledges that certain aspects of spiritual knowledge are reserved for those with the requisite spiritual maturity, echoing the ancient philosophical notion that some teachings are not suitable for the initiated. The term Bartiniya thus serves as a bridge between Islamic and broader esoteric traditions, acknowledging the complex interplay between exoteric religious practices and the esoteric pursuit of deeper spiritual truths. It underscores the richness of Islamic thought, where the quest for divine knowledge encompasses both the outward adherence to religious law and the inward journey toward understanding the hidden mysteries of the divine realm. The early 20th century witnessed the crystallization of Islamic esotericism as a concept within European thought, significantly influenced by the traditionalist school. This school, with figures like René Guénon and Friedrich Schoen, emphasized the distinction between the exoteric and esoteric aspects of Islam, paralleling these with the concepts of Sharia the law, and hakikah, inner truth, respectively. Yenon, in particular, identified Sufism as the embodiment of Islamic historicism, viewing it as a pure and universal tradition that offers a path, tariqah, from the exoteric to the esoteric. 
This perspective, which emerged as a response to the crisis of modernity and the perceived spiritual vacuum in the West, sought to reclaim the universal truths found in Islam's esoteric dimensions. It advocated for a revival of traditional sciences, such as alchemy, astrology, and numerology, seen as ways to access deeper universal realities through the lens of Islamic esoteric practice. Traditionalist thought influenced the understanding of Sufism and shaped perceptions of Shia Islam's esoteric traditions. Although not a traditionalist per se, Henry Corbin aligned closely with this view by privileging Shia esotericism and its philosophical underpinnings, particularly in the Persian context, over Sunni orthodoxy and Sufism. According to Corbin, this distinction between Sunni and Shia esoteric practices highlighted the depth of Shia's spiritual hermeneutics, which he saw as superior. Mitchell Yade, another scholar with traditionalist inclinations, similarly distinguished between Sunni Islam, which he perceived as predominantly exoteric, and Shia Islam's esoteric dimensions. For Eliade, Sufism represented a major tradition of Islamic esotericism. Yet, he suggested that Shia esotericism was the primary source of Sufism's mystical insights. The traditionalist and perennialist framing of Islamic esotericism thus underscored a universal quest for spiritual truth, positioning Islam, particularly through Sufism and Shia thought, as a critical repository of esoteric wisdom. This framing not only influenced Western scholarship on Islam, but also impacted how Islamic traditions were understood and practiced in the modern era, both in the West and in the Middle East. The legacy of this 20th century discourse is a complex interweaving of Islamic spiritual practices with universalist and perennial philosophies, highlighting the ongoing negotiation between tradition and modernity, between the inner and outer dimensions of faith. To grasp the essence of Islamic esotericism and apply it as a scholarly framework for studying both historical and contemporary expressions of Islam, it is crucial to adopt a method that intertwines the historical record with nuanced typological analyses. This approach aims to avoid oversimplification and acknowledges the diversity within Muslim esoteric traditions tied by a common cultural backdrop. Islamic esotericism can be explored through two main lenses, epistemological paradigms, revelatory versus intellectual, and social orientations, personal versus communal. The personal piety and quest for ultimate cosmic reality often manifest within religious communities, adapting rituals and narratives to reflect individual spiritual journeys in relation to broader social, intellectual, and political contexts. This dynamic was particularly evident from the late 7th to the middle of the 10th century, as Islam expanded and absorbed diverse cultural influences, fostering distinct styles of piety. A critical look at historical developments reveals a distinction between mystical approaches, which seek subjective inward awareness and the deepening of selfhood, and and charismatic tendencies that place emphasis on historical consciousness and moral commitments derived from datable events. While the mystical trend was not dominant initially, it has grown to significantly shape the inner life of Islam, particularly through movements like Sufism. Sufism, emerging as a form of ascetic personal piety, developed into a major institutional force by the 11th and 12th century, advocating for an experiential knowledge of divine truths beyond rational comprehension. This inclination towards the revelatory and experiential stands in contrast to intellectual esotericism, which engages with the hidden dimensions of the Quran, nature and the cosmos through intellectual inquiry and the occult sciences. The Ikhwan al-Safa, a secretive brotherhood from the 10th century, exemplifies intellectual esotericism with their encyclopedic work that bridges physical, metaphysical and divine sciences aiming to uncover the batin, inner aspect, through intellectual pursuits. Similarly, the Gayat al-Hakim, 
the goal of the sage and the writings of Ibn Mazara advocate for an understanding of divine truths through intellectual reflection, highlighting a pathway to enlightenment grounded in knowledge and contemplation. In contrast, figures like Ibn Arabi emphasize the limitations of intellectual reflection in knowing God, advocating for knowledge through revelation and spiritual exercises that lead to divine witnessing. These divergence highlights the ongoing dialogue and sometimes tension between the mystical, revelatory and the intellectual approaches within the Islamic esotericism. Four principles can frame our understanding of Islamic esotericism. The exegetical principle, emphasizing Quranic exegesis, the epistemological principle, distinguishing between intellectual and revelatory knowledge, the social principle, reflecting personal or collective salvation efforts, and the translinguistic principle, underscoring the use of symbols and allegory to convey esoteric knowledge. This framework offers a comprehensive lens to study Islamic esotericism, accounting for its rich diversity and deep historical roots, while also acknowledging the complex interplay of intellectual inquiry and spiritual experience that defines its essence. Islamic esotericism encompasses a rich and diverse historical tradition that defies simple categorization. Two key texts, the Gayat al-Hakim and the Razail Ikon al-Safa, illustrate the intellectual nature of esotericism, yet they differ in their approach to community engagement. The Ilkwam al-Safa, for instance, adopt a collective orientation, aiming to guide the Muslim community, Ummah, towards a harmonious utopia where individual and collective, individual and experiential realms are intertwined. The discrete social presence and engagement with occult sciences, often associated with esotericism, are not essential criteria. Historical practices vary widely, with the occult sciences becoming central to imperial ambitions in the Safavid, Mughal and Ottoman empires during the early modern period. The utilization of occult sciences for political ends challenges the notion of historicism as inherently discrete and marginalized. A re-examination of Islamic esotericism's place within broader historical and cultural contexts raises questions about its classification as rejected knowledge, a concept pivotal to understanding Western esotericism. The diverse regulatory environments of the Islamicate world, lacking a central authority akin to the church, suggest a different dynamic of acceptance and censorship, further complicated by colonial and post -colonial colonial impacts. Also, the dialogue between mystics and philosophers, particularly in the medieval period, underscores the contested nature of truth and knowledge. Figures like Ibn Arabi advocate for knowledge through revelation and spiritual experience, contrasting with intellectual approaches that seek divine truths through rational inquiry. This tension mirrors post-enlightenment debates on the legitimacy of rationality versus revelation, inviting further exploration of how Islamic esoteric currents navigated these shifts. Finally, contemporary expressions of Islamic esotericism, influenced by Western esoteric traditions, highlight the evolving nature of these spiritual practices. So today's exploration and our source challenges us to consider Islamic esotericism as a dynamic and multifaceted tradition transcending simple dichotomies and definitions, reflecting the complex interplay of history, culture and spirituality. This is it for today's video. If you watched until this point, leave me a magnifying glass emoji. Now, my dear symposiast, this project of delivering free academic knowledge based on peer-reviewed research can only exist thanks to your support. So if you have the means and want to 
make this project available to everybody, please consider supporting my work with a one-off PayPal donation by joining memberships, my inner symposium on Patreon and coffee, super thanking me in the comments, and checking out my services at drangelapuka.com. You can book a private session with me, uh, you can book uh, a tutoring session, a private lecture, uh, you can commission videos, and much more. So check it out. Also, don't forget to sign up for my newsletter so that you can get to know me better and get exclusive content. And if you like this video, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, activate the notification bell so that you will always be notified when I upload a new video. Share this video around, leave me a comment because I want to know your thoughts about this episode. And thank you so much for being here up until this point. <laughs> I hope that you stay tuned for all the academic fun. Bye for now. Today we hold a